Hello friends, warm greetings to all of you. I am Dr. Nikhil Bahuguna, a practicing endodontist and a conservative dentist from Noida. And today I am going to share a very small uh, video with you, a small tip with you regarding the safety when we use sodium hypochlorite as an irrigant. Now we all know that sodium hypochlorite is an integral part of root canal dentistry. But we are sometimes scared to use it thinking that what if it goes out of the tooth or what if it causes some problems inside the oral cavity. Well, we have all seen pictures like these wherein uh, the patient has had some kind of a hypochlorite accident. But believe you me, this kind of a feature is very rare. What happens most commonly with sodium hypochlorite is burning of the tongue, burning of the mucosa or the soft tissue, which happens because of negligence and not because of sodium hypochlorite. Now we may have cavities under rubber dam which may show leakage and sometimes you don't even use a rubber dam which will make sure that all the hypochlorite that we are using is going to leach in these proximal areas and cause a lot of tissue burn and then flow into the uh, sulcus and vestibule and cause more irritation to the soft tissue. Isolating the cavity with cotton is not something which is going to be sufficient. What we can do is, before we start our root canal treatment, we should first close the cavities so that we have a four-walled chamber wherein sodium hypochlorite can be easily stored and act like a reservoir. And it also prevents all the exit points barring the occlusal cavity wherein we can use a suction actively to tackle the problem of uh, leaching sodium hypochlorite. For example, we have a tooth here which has a cracked amalgam filling. Removal of the amalgam filling exposes the entire tooth but here we have not exposed the pulp intentionally so that we can go ahead restore the tooth with a contrast colored composite. Go ahead and isolate the tooth and then start from the center. That gives us a centrality as well as a reservoir for the hypochlorite preventing the leaching through proximal spaces. Sometimes when we cannot do a pre-endo buildup we can always close the side walls or the open cavities with the help of resin dam material which is available which acts like a flowable material which will close once the light cure is shown on top of it. I'm going to show the use of a very good material that I have tried recently, the NT glitter dam. So here we had a case where even after rubber dam isolation, there was a little amount of uh, bleeding area which showed that there is a little gap through which hypochlorite can seep out and saliva can seep in. The cavity was already done, so we just covered the open orifices with the help of a Teflon tape. And now we go ahead and we seal it with the resin material. So you would see how easy it is to use the, uh, the resinous material, the anti glitter dam over here, which will help us create an artificial wall over the leaking area, preventing any kind of a hypochlorite extrusion or salivary ingress into the cavity till we are doing our cleaning and shaping process. It's a fairly easy to extrude material, comes in a syringe with a tip. All such materials are almost flowable in nature, having a decent viscosity. They are light curable, so the moment the adaptation is done, all we have to do is cure it with a proper light and we have a ready wall which has been created. So now we have a, a fourth wall created which is going to prevent any kind of an ingress of saliva or outflow of uh, sodium hypochlorite. And once the work is done, we can just remove this and replace it with a temporary filling. Sharing another similar kind of a situation where we uh, isolated the tooth first and then created a resin barrier so that now we can do an access uh, refinement and go ahead and do a root canal treatment. While application, the contacts had not been cleared. So while putting the rubber dam inside, you can notice there is a little tear as well. Such things are quite common if we notice under magnification. But here, the canals were not exposed. We just sealed the sidewall with the help of the uh, NT glitter dam. It acts like a proximal wall, which will seal the side which is exposed. And post the light cure, 
as we saw before, we have a ready proximal wall. Now we can go ahead and we can refine our access opening. We can expose the canals and we can start and go ahead and complete our root canal treatment very effectively. Well friends, that was a very small attempt to share with you a very small clinical tip as to how to seal those proximal areas. If there are any questions you have, you can either post them on my Facebook pages of Eduard Delhi or Demystifying Smiles, on my Instagram handle of bhavna at the rate 1602, or at my personal and professional email IDs, or you could WhatsApp me on my phone number. I'd be more than happy to uh, clarify the doubts. Well, before we end, just a request, please practice safety by wearing your masks. Be socially distant when it is not needed to get close to people. And if there's nothing better to do, stay home and stay safe. I wish all of you a very happy dentistry and a very safe life ahead.